with Hogwarts Legacy just around the corner, what better time than to revisit the many Harry Potter games and rank them from worst to best? Now, I haven't actually played every single Harry Potter game, so this list will be sticking to the games I've personally played through to completion. So no GBA games, mobile or PC versions, I'm afraid. Also, I'm sure this list will stir some debate, so get your quills ready and let me know in the comments your personal lists, and please keep it civil. Okay, here we go. The number 10 spot goes to Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 on PS3. Oh boy, where to even begin? First of all, unlike most of the previous games in the series, we aren't even at Hogwarts for most of the playtime. Yes, I know it makes sense with the film and the first half of the book having Harry and co on the run. However, a big part of why I loved the earlier games was exploring Hogwarts, attending lessons and immersing myself in the fantasy of being a student at the famous castle. So immediately, we are on to a losing start. With most of the game taking place in random generic countryside and factories. Linear levels with little to no exploration or discovery. Great. The gameplay is also god-awful, with it feeling like a bland third-person cover shooter instead of a Harry Potter game. It also just looks so lifeless and drab and ugly. At least it's mercifully short. Probably like Dobby's penis. At number 9 we have... The Deathly Hallows Part 2 on PS3. Yeah, this one wasn't much better but at least we got to see Hogwarts again. Same small linear levels with even more generic third-person combat, shooting wave after wave of Death Eaters. I feel mechanically it's slightly more satisfying and playable than part one, but that's not saying much. And the fact that it's shorter makes it less tedious, but only a little bit. Playing as the other students was kind of neat, I guess. Nah, this was still pretty crap. At number 8, we have The Goblet of Fire on PS2. Man, this one could have been at the bottom of the barrel of butter beer, as the changing gameplay from the earlier games to a co-op puzzle shooter was a huge disappointment. But it works. It just isn't very fun. The shift to a more realistic, movie-inspired graphical style is also not in the game's favour, lacking personality and character. I imagine it might have been more fun with friends, but since I don't have any, playing this solo was a bit of a slog, with terrible AI and again, quite limited levels. Feels less like living through the events of the book and more like playing a very average arcade game, which is not what I wanted. Collecting the every flavor beans used to feel exciting, but here you have them absolutely falling out of your ass. I wonder if there's a spell that does that. At number 7 we have the Half-Blood Prince on PS3. Definitely getting into the pretty okay territory here, with gameplay more akin to the early games in the series. Hogwarts is well realized and ripe for exploring. The love potion section is genuinely hilarious and Harry controls pretty well. What brings it down are the bloody potion minigames and subpar combat. Also, the character models give me bloody nightmares. Overall though, not terrible, and a big improvement over Goblet of Fire. Speaking of improving massively over Goblet of Fire, at number 6 we have the game based on the fifth book, Order of the Phoenix. A very welcome return to the formula of the first three games, Order of the Phoenix feels like a proper Potter experience again, with Hogwarts looking and feeling great to explore. The atmosphere is great and it also helps it's based on one of my favourite books in the franchise. The graphics haven't aged too badly, all things considered, and it's more colourful than the later games. The combat, again though, is hit and miss, with the right stick being used to cast spells. Good in theory, just not very well executed. Out of all the games on this list, it feels most like the film, which I guess is what they were going for at this point. Okay, now we get to what is, in my opinion, the good stuff. At number 5, we have the PS1 version of Chamber of Secrets. Ah yes, those glorious, jittery PS1 graphics. This one would probably be higher if I had played this as a kid, but sadly I never owned it. 
it plays pretty much exactly like the first game, with many reused assets and gameplay mechanics. Technically, it's really not that special, and arguably, is not that great a game. But just the nostalgia of this particular era, and the absolutely wonderful atmosphere, really grabbed me and wrapped me up in a warm and fuzzy feeling. At number 4 we have The Philosopher's Stone on PS2. Another game I wish I had played back in the day. This was released shortly after Chamber of Secrets and is fundamentally very similar. I love this art style. And if it weren't for Harry saying the flavour of every single bloody bean he picks up, this might be higher up on my list. It has everything you want in a Potter adventure, even if it lacks some individuality compared to Chamber and cool additions Azkaban made to the formula. Speaking of Azkaban, at number 3 we have the game based on the third book on the PS2. Azkaban is absolutely my favourite book in the series, and the game is the most mechanically interesting Potter game in the whole franchise. Being able to swap at will to control Harry, Ron or Hermione, with each of them having unique abilities to solve puzzles, was a really smart evolution of the format. And it just feels really fun, just going on an adventure with the beloved trio. It still looks pretty darn good to this day, and if it weren't for the nostalgia factor of the next two entries, it would probably be top. At number two, we have The Chamber of Secrets on the PS2. Man, going from the PS1 to PS2 was such a leap in graphical power, and the incredible feeling of being let loose into a stunningly large-scale Hogwarts for the first time was a dream come true to 12-year-old me. Got this for Christmas and spent hours finding all the hidden passages, classrooms, and witches and wizards cards. It was an experience I'll never forget, and it felt like such a step up from the first game on PS1. Okay, here we go. I think you all know what's coming up. Yes, at number one, we have the game that started it all. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone on PS1. Nostalgia. It's one hell of a drug. By today's standards, this is not a good game. But by God, does it bring me so much joy, even now as a 31-year-old. I hate the broom controls. The graphics are objectively awful. And the less said about that bloody Gringotts level, the better. The cross button will lock the minecart. But it just has so much soul. Literally too, since Jeremy Soul composed the music, and what amazing music it is too. The atmosphere it helps create is unrivaled in the series, and being the first time I could ever visit places like the Great Hall, Hagrid's Hut, and the Forbidden Corridor, I couldn't get enough. Also, Flipendo will forever be ingrained in my psyche. Flipendo! Flipendo! Seriously though, screw Gringotts. And there we have it, all the Harry Potter games that I've played ranked from worst to best. Very briefly, and probably not very well. I'm sure you will all have differing opinions from my own, but please do let me know in the comments what you would change, what games you would add or reshuffle. I would love to know. Thanks for watching everyone, I really do hope you've enjoyed this uh, quick ranking list, and uh, subscribe if you want to follow more of my content. Thank you so much everyone, take care, and bye bye for now.